So Eden Share, we're talking to you in season seven of The Middle. First of all, congratulations on getting to season seven of such a hit show. Thank you. It's pretty insane. <laughs> well, yeah. what is insane is that you've never been nominated for an Emmy. And it's our <laughs> goal at Gold Derby to correct that. I mean, you've won the Critics' Choice Award, been nominated there. The critics love you. They love the show. Oh, please. And so please. now <laughs> it's time for the TV Academy to embrace this. Let's, let's hope it's a lucky seven. But I want to go way back to the beginning, to the first season. And I, as we were chatting, I told you I'd done one of these in its infancy with Patricia Heaton. And back then, you know, she'd won a couple of Emmys for Everybody Loves Raymond. And she said then that an Emmy nomination for her would be nice. But boy, oh boy, did she wish that Eden Cher would get one. And that was season one. I mean, you were already on her, I mean, on, on her radar. She was the queen of the Emmys for Everybody Loves Raymond. So take us back to if, if, the casting of it. I mean, I know you'd been on an, another series and just do you, did they cast you, did they test you with your siblings? How did they put it all together so well? Um, I, I don't, I mean, I do know because I've heard the like origin story so many times, but it is, I think, a miracle. It is like, it was not a, I don't think it was not an easy process doing this. They had, um, you know, they, they had filmed, they did a pilot before this. Right. And, um, Ricky Lake, as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. And unfortunately <laughs> they had to, I feel so bad for all the people who were in the original one who now like this were in season seven and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but no, but they did that. And the only person they kept from that, because they had cast Atticus. Okay. So they had him from before. Um, and then they recast the whole thing. And I think they, Patty was on their list. Patty was on their like short list. They were like pie in the sky. And then they offered it to her and she took it. Um, and then, and they had Neil from, I think also they had like a list of people and they were like, oh yeah, this guy would be great. And they maybe had an interview with him, but it was very, it was, I think it was an offer. They had an interview and then he offered it and they were like, great, we got our Frankie and Mike. And then um, Charlie, I talked to him about it, and he, because we had both actually auditioned for it for the first one a while ago, and they were like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I auditioned for the second time, and I, I remember being like, I've done this before. What, what, didn't I do this before? And then I was like, I like this, but they didn't like me. Why am I going back? And my manager was like, no, just go. And for, so Charlie did the same thing, and Charlie said he, you know, he auditioned, and then he got called back. And then he screen tested, and he was the only one at the screen test. He was like, I don't know if there's anyone else. And then screen tested, and then he got it. My, I was like, really? That's all? That's your whole story? Because my story <laughs> was audition the first time, not even a callback. Audition this second round. I get a callback, and I get there, and there are more girls there than before, more and different girls. And I was like, what the? It's like, this isn't a callback. This is why am I here again? What is going on? And I like called my manager and he was like, no, no, they want to see you. They want to see you. And I was like, okay. And then they were like, you got another callback. And I was like, oh, okay. Is it a, it's a real callback? And I went and there were more girls still. And I was like, I was like, they, I was, I was like a total Sue moment. I was like, they don't like me. I was like, call my manager. I was like, they don't like me. I, why do they, why do they keep bringing me in? They, they, they're not like narrowing it down at all. And then I got called, I like literally, I did this six, seven, eight times, many times where I went back and finally it started to be like an actual callback. But it's like, it, it, it was not, it's like each time there were just like very few other girls. And I was like, every other, or, or a few, few, a few less. I don't know. There were, it wasn't like they, they like knew immediately like, yes, this one, or like it's between her and another. It was like, they were really, every step of the way, I was just like convinced. I was like, they don't want me. Why do they keep bringing me back? And um, manager was like, just keep going back. And I was like, okay. And the other girls were like, I was 17 at the time. The other girls were like 11 and 12. Wow. And you, I, Sue was how old at the time? 13. 13. Okay. Well, so. Yeah. Which was like, I looked young and I wore my own set of fake braces. 
which I am convinced is the only reason I got this job. Okay, but well, well, why do you have a set of fake braces? <laughs> it's insane. It's, it's like insane. To, like when I think back on my life and I'm like, none of this was intentional. And my whole life changed because of this just off chance. I worked on, I did a season of the show Weeds when I was on. Right. I had braces in real life. And I guess part of the script was, and I, so I got the job when I had braces. And then part of the thing, like braces were like important to the character. I don't know. And, um, and so I was like, and I had them, for, I, I also personally had them for five years. And so I was like, my orthodontist was like, you have to get them off. And I told them and they were like, nope. And I was like, I have to get them off. And they were like, nope. And I was like, I have to get them off. And so they were like, okay. And I got them off and they just put, they put, they found, I think my orthodontist did it. They put my uh, real brackets my right. braces that I wore. They just inserted them like into these Invisalign for these fake braces. And so I wore that for an extra, whatever, like the two episodes more that I was on the show. And then at the end of the season, usually they're really strict with that stuff, even though nobody else would fit into that retainer. They like props or makeup department. They'd be like, we have to keep it. You can't take it. But they were just like, they knew I wasn't coming back. And they were like, do you want to keep it? And I was like, yeah, that'd be fun. Like, that's funny. I could do it for like, I don't know, Halloween or something. That's funny. And then I just had them in my possession. And in the, I don't know if in the script it said, I can't remember in the script it said that she has braces or if I was just like, it'll make me look younger. I <laughs> braces. And I really do, I genuinely, cause I, I went, I went there. So finally another callback. Then I screen tested, I screen tested. There were two other girls there, both like 11 and 12, both just like, where's your mom? How'd you drive here? <laughs> I was like, I'm older than you. And I went, and then I again I went in and I was like they don't like me they're not what they're looking for screen tested again there was only one other girl there and then the other girl was in there for like forty minutes or something I was in there for like seven minutes and I went in my car and I just like cried and I was like why are they putting me through this they don't like me and then I got the call like half an hour later and they were like you got it and I swear to God I'm like it was totally because of the braces. It's because I could work as legal 18 and I think they just lucked out. <laughs> okay, we think you're this wonderful actress and have created this character of Sue, but now I'm, I'm feeling as we're chatting that where, where does Sue stop and Eden starts and vice versa? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I there are like very clear differences like when sometimes but then there are sometimes it's so hard. I feel like at the beginning there were very the lines were very clear, and then as you sort of like it's sort of uh, in it. Uh, um, what is it called? Inevitable. <laughs> it's sort of inevitable if you're spending so many hours a day um, playing this, playing a character, but like living in that skin. It's sort of like you know, seven months of the year, 12, 14 hours a day, I'm just doing, I'm behaving like like this other person, but the person is me. It's sort of like, you kind of can't help but like meld. And then like, I don't know who, it's so weird to sound because it's a fictional character, but like who's influencing who? And if I like do something funny, then I like almost steal it for like my real life. And I've been talking before and people have been like, wow, that was such a Sue thing. And I kind of stop and I'm like, no, that was an Eden thing first. <laughs> Sue stealing it. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting. And I think that, I mean, the, the, as you were talking about the, the way luck and, and fate plays a hand in the role. And in a way, I think because Sue, at least in those first early years, imagine if you were playing her and yourself in middle or high school. I mean, that would have been tough to go to school having done some of these Sue things. I, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, it would have, it just wouldn't have happened because I wouldn't have been able to, like, I think really, maybe they knew it. Like you really do need someone kind of not in it to be playing it in order to like understand. Cause it's so, cause it's so awkward. And the only way to have, like to, to be awkward without being so, like, you can't play self-conscious by being self, by actually being self-conscious. Right. So you have to sort of have lived through it to know that like this is funny and ridiculous and like like when you're when you're just like terrified of being embarrassed, you can't then be you can't embarrass yourself with with reckless abandon, you know. Well, I think one of the reasons I mean critics 
love the show. I mean, audiences love the show. It's consistent. It's, you know, the Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. You look at the ratings and they're sort of, they're now what they were then. I mean, to do that in this competitive marketplace is such a testament to the writing, the directing, the acting. And I really, the writing, I mean, it's, it's, now, Patricia Eaton came from the three-camera comedy, which you've done in front of an audience. Um, this single camera, how much does the script change from day one? And it's, um, you do a table read, and then that's sort of what you shoot? Pretty much. I mean, they do minor, they do changes. Sometimes there are big changes if it, if at the read. Sometimes they're really, at, at the read, something just really doesn't work. And that's like, that's what table reads are for, to see what works and what doesn't. But it's not like because I've done a few episodes of like silly multicam things, and I totally they just like throw things at you like on the spot. They're just like, oh, you know what, do this way, like change this line, and it's so because it's so yeah, it's really specific, and you need to like hit your mark every time, and you need to be consistent, like holding this in this hand. You kind of can't change around the lines, and also so it's the table read. The minor minor things change, and then it doesn't. That's pretty much like that's pretty much it so i mean any single camera i mean some some of those uh the physical uh stunts for lack of a better word that you've had to do over the years have you ever gotten injured i mean sue takes a lot of falls and she's getting yeah. better <laughs> no yeah. I, I think it's gotten <laughs> I will say if i take away if i have taken i if i take away nothing from this experience i will have taken away um, our stunt coordinator is so uh, good, is so amazing, and he taught me everything I know about physical comedy. Like I, you know, I think I, in, I want to say intuitively, but it's not intuitive. I'm not. I think I get credit for like physical comedy. Like I just, I'm just clumsy. But he taught me like actually how to fall, like how how to properly fall, and how to do these things. Um, and so he taught me how to like really. Uh, Hold on, I don't even know where I was going with this. I learned how to fall, and then oh, oh, oh! But so you kind of have to. The, but but the better I I got at it, the more I was like willing to like. No, I can do this. I don't need to double. I know how to do it, and it's going to look better, and it's going to be funnier. But so it's like the more risks I'm willing to take, and oh man, I after this, I'm like oh man, like I'm going to be my body will. But like it will be broken by the time I'm 30 because I just love it. Because and one time I got a concussion. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> suffering for funny. your art. What? Suffering for your art. That's uh, what I say. Suffering for my art. Suffering for you. <laughs> well, people love it. Now, I think that what they really, I mean, I know they're fictional characters, but we really feel like we know the hex. And what I think is really, again, a testament to the show is. It's not static. I mean, the, you've all aged in the show. You know, seven, you're seven years on now. Sue's wow. at college with with uh, Axel. Much to it's sort of his dismay, but he also I think he secretly likes it. But he loves it. <laughs> you know, as this character has evolved, I think it's so much richer too. And I think one of the really special things is now the relationship between uh, Sue and her father. And, and this season in particular, I mean, there's been lots of moments I've teared up watching. I mean, I've t cried laughing, but then there's moments where you just want to cry. It's That's, so sweet. That makes me so happy. And also it makes me feel not alone <laughs> because I, I'm like, oh, I'm biased. This is because this is like, I get to do this, but I, I read it sometimes and I get, I get choked up too. I think because also like, it's so rare to be able to say, sincerely to not because you kind of <laughs> gonna give away industry secrets you kind of because you don't want to like you don't want to bad mouth anyone kind of like if someone asks you, like how are these people you kind of just you just answer and be like it's great to work with them like it's great because it's it's work and they're, if they're not like a horrible person it's like yeah yeah you can get through it and you don't want to whatever you kind of just have to go through the motions of saying like oh, we got we all get along even if there's drama this is like insane that i can say sincerely that these are like oh i have pictures here somewhere that these are like become my best friends i love everyone so much charlie is charlie's 
here I have I should have done it in the living room where I can just show all of our pictures together where I'm crying in one of them and he's like Charlie but Charlie's my, like one of my best friends and Neil I just become and, and Patty like I've just become so close with them and I've, I've formed these like as we've sort of we form like we've grown with these real relationships now like you said like when yeah specifically like if there's a when there are touching moments with Neil also Neil doesn't emote <laughs> but he's not he's tone. he doesn't that's what makes him such a good actor is because it's so subtle and yet you see it in him and and whether the relationship with his wife and then Charlie and Atticus the same how they've grown these characters i mean i think it's again it's in the writing but they themselves as actors and and so that must just be such a joy that it isn't i mean sue you know really has evolved and now you know you i i hope you're all coming back next year i mean that uh, I, think we are. I think we are yeah i I'm pretty, i mean i i think the show is i just want to make sure you are because now oh, oh, oh. oh yeah yeah yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me so, I get to yeah, I get to sit in a trailer with my best friends for, <laughs> please. So one of the things, and like I said, we are so determined, we really want you to get this Emmy nomination. And, and the hardest thing you really have to do when you get a nomination um, is pick one episode that you would think would be sort of the best of your work this year. Is there something that's standing out for you right now? Oh, <laughs> Just because I, I don't, there are certain, I'm very, uh, you know, all the cliche the actors are self-critical or whatever. And I like, when I, I, I don't watch every single episode because it's like, I'm so proud of the work that I do when I do it. I don't want anything to sort of like take away from that. So if I am going to watch something and I'm just in a self-conscious mood, I don't want to then be like, to ruin it for me. I don't want to, I just happen to be in a self-conscious mood that day and I watch it and I'm really nitpicky or something. So like I don't watch all of them, but there when it, when when there is a I've I've grown enough that when there is a like a good episode, I can say like I was good there, <laughs> that was good. I'm proud. Like I worked. Like I I did a good job. But there's no so like season before. I remember the one I was like I really enjoyed the graduation episode. Oh well, that that the, again with your right. We were so angry you didn't get nominated because that was an Emmy winning episode. Well, you know what. Gold Derby, we're obsessed with the Emmys. What, what I'm going to do is we're going to set up a post in our forums and ask our readers what episode you should submit. Because these people know their Emmys and they know the Emmy episodes and they know what kind wins and it's range and empathy and impact. I mean, and you've had so many of those this year. But uh, it really is something. Are you really? Now, I, I have to, the last question I want to ask you is sort of, you, are you old enough to remember Felicity? With Carrie oh, Rock. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I used to watch it as a kid. Okay, so she very controversially cut yeah. her hair between seasons. So, I'm pretty sure because I'm, oh, sorry, I'll let you finish your question. You're pretty sure what? I'm pretty sure she's the reason why, because Felicity was a Warner Brothers show, right? Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that she's the reason why they make sure to put a clause in our contracts now saying you're not allowed to cut our hair. Oh, okay. So, so. How, how did your haircut come about then? It was obviously uh, contractually approved. It was. It was. I wasn't going to do it without um, without uh, 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 Eileen and Deanne's blessing and all that stuff. It was... Um, Rightfully so, because the structure of a sitcom is you, you kind of you reset in a in a very in a, I like I it's comfort the tradition of sitcoms sort of keeping the same and they let you grow but like you know keeping things consistent and keeping even like the physical way characters look consistent that's really make a good sitcom you feel everything um yeah consistent and um so for after I hadn't cut my hair in five years and actually I hadn't cut my hair in my whole life like ever oh wow and yeah so i was like i want to cut my i need a change um and uh so i so after season five i was like can i cut my hair and they were like no oh really <laughs> yeah which i don't again i don't blame them for at all that's like i get totally and it worked out so much better um that uh and so then after season six i was like 
I'm 60. Really, would it be okay if I cut my hair? And they were totally on board. They were like, you know what? Yeah. Because now, like, Sue's going to college and it's going to be, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a change. It's just going to mature. And then I, so then the day after we wrapped, I like, boom, cut it all off. <laughs> and it ends up being like, I think it was such a good physical, um, like, manifestation of, the growth that then they like let happen sort of, it was just sort of a happy, like everything worked out really well. Like it wouldn't, it almost like, I feel like keeping this, keeping it too much the same would have stunted, could have potentially stunted something. I don't know. At this point I'm like, I think like, like we bought, we all were like, people recognize, people recognize Sue without hair, right? <laughs> it's just well, like a few it, it showed, you know, sort of the, uh, you know, the caterpillar turning into a butterfly. I mean, it really, you really blossomed. And I'm just thinking, I mean, there's so many lovely moments on the show, but the one where you're, where Sue's, we know what Sue's doing this summer. She's going to Dollywood, um, which just celebrated its 30th anniversary. Oh, uh, really? That, um, you know, when, when you just sort of have to say to your father, well, I'm not asking your permission. I'm telling you, I mean, it's so, it's so great to see, these characters, these children become young adults. And uh, so that's what, um, so Sue's going off to Dollywood. What's Eden gonna do for her hiatus? Uh, good question. Well, I have, um, um, I, I, do, I do a cartoon. First of all, my first answer actually, like first and foremost, nothing. <laughs> I am gonna do nothing. <laughs> like first priority is my nothing time <laughs> because it, I've, there's not been a hiatus where I've actually done just like, I, I mean, I can't, I get so, I, my, I have bored a phobia where like, I just like, I can't be bored, but like, I'm just doing like Eden stuff, like I'm working on my house. I'm going to travel. I'm going to, but then I also have, um, I'm doing some projects. Like I, um, I have a book coming out. Oh, okay. Wonderful. So I'm doing like final edits on that and stuff, but it's coming out in October. And so I've been working on that. And it's, and it's what's it? uh about it's called the emotionary <laughs> it's a dictionary for your feelings and it's like a coffee table book it's actually on my coffee table right now because i shamelessly self-promote in my own house <laughs> let me show you the cover this is insane oh shoot it's absolutely insane that i'm doing this right now it's this but the the cover was released <laughs> that's wonderful so it's a, yeah, it's a coffee table book. It's a dictionary of words that don't exist. Oh shoot, for feelings that do, is the concept, and it uh, it's all these made up words because I'm a crazy feelings person. Oh, in and that book, you tell you you must have a word then for Emmy nomination morning, and they actually announce your name. What would be the word? Oh my god. Okay, maybe um, appraisative. Appraisative. Yeah, it's um, or maybe no. I'm sorry, it's appreciated. I'm trying to think. I should know these. I've made these up, but it's um, appreciative. Yeah, appreciate appreciated. I think because it's appreciative plus amazed, which is just like the overwhelming. Uh, what is it? The overwhelming shock <laughs> that like sh the, the the grateful shock the the overwhelming. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't remember this. the shock that someone um that someone <laughs> likes you or that someone like approve that someone enjoys you as much as you. Well, let's, let's yeah. I hope that we're uh, using that word on uh, Emmy uh, nominations morning. Oh God, you guys, you're so, so sweet. Thank you. I, it, either way, honestly, having your praise and validation is more than enough. <laughs> wow. You really aim low. You've got to, we've got to work <laughs> on that. I I do. It's true. I don't need much to feel super <laughs> validated. Well, thanks again. Oh yeah, thank you so much.